Okay, good evening everyone. Uh, this is transportation focus group meeting for our Buda Sustainable Community Area designation. I welcome you all for attending virtually the focus group meeting. So the time is now 6.05, number 5th, 2020. Here's the agenda for the meeting today. So we will be looking at the uh, focus group meetings. I'll give you an overview because there's going to be a series of meetings for different focus groups. And then uh, we will briefly talk about the project uh, kickoff um, results and the feedback which we received, uh, which we held a month ago. And then you did a survey which was available until October 23rd and we collected the results from the survey, which we are going to. I'll give a brief overview of the survey results and then the floor is open for question and answers. I'm going to keep it brief with the feedback and the results, which we are, uh, which we got. Uh, the main reason for the focus group meeting is for us to get input from the community. So here is a series of uh, meetings which we are going to host for each focus group elements. So today is the um, um, transportation focus group meeting, which is uh, from 6 to 7 p.m. And then uh, followed by that, we have economy focus group meeting, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. And uh, following Thursday, number 12th, we have quality of life at 6 p.m., environment at 7.30 p.m. And then the following Wednesday on number 18, we have housing at 6 p.m. and local government support at 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. So uh, by now, I'm sure you're all familiar with what uh, transportation of uh, group focuses on. Uh, we discuss about this at the project kickoff. So it's the projects involving how people communicate uh, from place to place, access to transit corridors, pedestrian safety and sidewalks. We received a lot of feedback on pedestrian safety and sidewalks and alternative modes of transportation, public transit, such as bus and rail, proximity to the transportation centers, parking, and we also received some of the feedback from parking issues and then road conditions and maintenance. So this is to summarize the project kickoff feedback. We received uh, um, a lot of feedback and uh, we had a good community input from the project kickoff meeting. This is just a few of the pointers uh, which focus mainly on the transportation. So uh, there were questions on how transportation in the area can be modeled differently in future plans and how to increase trans, uh, transit options and micro transit options. And mainly there were uh, questions on sidewalks, especially on Potomac Avenue and Hailthrope near the Mark Station. When it comes to sidewalk, it is also about the Shelbourne Avenue, which the community brought up. And um, uh, there was um, concerns on coordinations with ridership from UMBC to Arbutus. And uh, there were uh, comments on um, how to enhance the college town appeal versus how to maintain the uh, quaint neighborhood charm town. And also there were requests for sidewalks near schools and library. And there were also comments on uh, to explore the structured parking at the Mark station. So these uh, uh, graphs were put together from the survey results, which we received for strength and weaknesses. So um, um, mainly looking at these trends, um, we put together uh, based on the topics of proximity, Point neighborhood, walkable areas, and others, other categories. So proximity, mainly people talked about how close it is to Catonsville, how close it is to UMBC, Elkridge, and Ellicott City. So um, it is convenient, Arbutus is conveniently located to its uh, adjacent neighbor, uh, neighborhood uh, places, which is a uh, strength to the community. 
And uh, then uh, people have also talked about uh, how uh, it is a quaint neighborhood with a charm town city. So which people like about and being uh, closely um, located with the adjacent neighborhood helps them to be walkable with the other areas. And the others, which is shown here, they have mainly talked about uh, its general comments, like how many years they spent in the neighborhood and about the green spaces. Weaknesses mainly uh, does the business types. That was the major comments we received. Uh, business types being the existing businesses, how to sustain the existing business, uh, businesses, how to retain the existing business. And then mainly uh, expectations of having businesses to model what's in Cadence World downtown and Ellicott City Main Street. These were a few of the comments for uh, business types. And uh, people have also uh, raised concerns about the vacant stores, how to reduce the vacant stores, uh, vacancy, uh, how to control the commercial vacancy. And then the lack of green spaces, and there were comments about crimes and uh, flooding, flooding issues, mainly about the flooding in the Leeds Avenue. So we had totally close to 37 responses from the survey results of which close to 30 to 32 were mainly focused on the uh, transportation. Um, so the main thing was that here I have some pointers to let you know on which areas on transportation was those uh, survey results focused on. So the bike access from Guinness Brewery was something which was requested from the community and to provide adequate pedestrian walkways and sidewalks was the standard comment which we saw from the results and to provide more walking trails and also expanding UMBC bus services to the community and more transit options uh, to have more public uh, uh, transit uh, to the community and uh, parking issues was not uh, uh, was commented generally and uh, there were requests for more bike paths and road maintenance and uh, bus stop maintenance and uh, there were comments for need for uh, traffic study and also the pedestrian safety and to install uh, signage was also one of the main comments with the transportation survey results. So putting together what we heard from the project kickoff and also the sales survey results, which was online and which we just discussed on the major uh, comments we received, putting together all these things, we categorized them uh, based on your input. And um, so majority of the comments were uh, requesting for more transits and bike paths and then requesting for sidewalks. And, exp uh, and uh, there were uh, comments mainly also to maintenance of roads and bus stops, and there were requests for walking trails. And there was uh, also comment for expanding UMBC shuttle services. So mainly when we talk about the pedestrian safety, there was uh, comments on um, how pedestrian walkway could be established along Sulphur Spring Road from the Arbutus Library to the middle school and also install safety signage, flashing lights. East Drive was appointed in uh, most of the comments and also along the Linden and Shelbourne Road and the parking issue was brought up in the downtown Arbutus. And also to provide a shuttle service from the library to the library and the senior center. And the bike access, when we talk about the bike access, there was mention about uh, uh, bike access from the Guinness Brewery to downtown and also to add bike uh, lanes and to facelift the existing bus stops and also mainly to provide bike paths along the Herbert Avenue. So these were the major uh, comments which we received from the survey results and the project kickoff feedback. So from these uh, comments uh, and your input, which we received so far, 
Um, uh, I'm going to open the floor for the question and answers, but before that, I would like to get more answers to the questions here because these are the generalized comments we got, like uh, areas that require sidewalks. But as I mentioned, there was Shelburne Avenue mentioned uh, in a couple of places and also along the Sulphur Spring Road. But other than that, if you have any specific areas, we would like to know that. And also there were mention, uh, comments on to coordinate with UMBC. I know Arbutus is already coordinating with UMBC, but uh, along with the uh, ridership, what are your comments and how to do that? And also there were comments on how to maintain the existing uh, quaint neighborhood, but also with UMBC nearby and uh, coordinating with UMBC how to change them into college town appeal. So um, I would like to hear more uh, from the community on that. And uh, there were um, if uh, any beautification projects with specific uh, areas that you have in mind, now is the time to let us know. And also the parking issues. There were comments that we have parking issues in the downtown, but if you could be more specific, It'll be helpful for us and also um, the, the generalized comment which we received was we need more public transit and if you could be more specific on the areas specific areas it'll be helpful we have county representatives from department of transportation here so uh, we have sam sneed and jesse blake here to take questions um so if you be very specific it would be easy for us to help you with the answers and also put together uh, in the application for uh, future goals and plans. And this is something which I also want to add in the question and answers because um, uh, we talked about the survey results and the feedback which we received so far. And I, I asked you to elaborate on the specific areas, but if you have something which is, um, which you haven't discussed at all, and if it's related to transportation, which was not raised in the survey results or at the project kickoff, now is the time to let us know. And again, as we mentioned earlier, you can either elaborate on the survey results, which you see here, or you can think of uh, the transportation focus elements based on its strengths, weaknesses, challenges, opportunities, and be very specific on uh, the areas. Uh, that will be really helpful for us to take it uh, further from here. And I would also like to mention that uh, after the meeting, I know you have all access to the hub and you're getting familiarized with the hub. There is a survey from the transportation planning team. They have drafted a survey. It's close to seven questions and it's mainly focusing on the transportation, convenience, safety, and information amenities. So if you take uh, those survey, it will be available for a week. If you could answer those questions, it will be helpful for the team uh, to gather your results and it will help them to uh, advance in the vision and development goals for the future plans. So I have the link here. I will send you the link and it will be available in the hub uh, sometime tomorrow. So now I can open up the floor to questions like the project kickoff. I just want to let you know, please type your name in the chat box. I have my colleague Joe Fraker. I have a division chief Amy Mante with us today. So uh, we will navigate reading the chat box and uh, answer your questions. So please type in your name and the question in the chat box. Thank you. Any questions? If you could type in the chat box, we will unmute you and you can ask the question. If you have called in, you can just ask your question.
I have it. There is a question from uh, Joseph Reiger, and it says, uh, how can we begin speaking about the parking lot on East Drive? So um, is that any specific concern you have, Joe, on the parking lot on East Drive? From all the comments, what I received was that um, the East Drive shopping center needs a facelift. So I'm just trying to understand your specific comment. Is parking an issue there? Is it, do you need more parking or? Yeah, so, so um, and Bettina, Bettina Tebow might chime in also on this. So the, one of the questions about the, the parking lot is that it, it is a principal parking lot for the downtown area and it is a metered lot. And uh, so one of the primary questions might be, uh, does it need to be a metered lot? I believe we've done some exploratory uh, look on that and believe probably that the maintenance cost of the lot is uh, greater than the income that's produced by that lot. If it were more open to the public, we might see uh, just in general more usage uh, of that to support the businesses on East Drive. So uh, a primary question is, should that continue to be a metered lot? Uh, there is some question uh, principally from Bettina uh, would be, can UMBC uh, help to maintain that lot to defer some of the expense uh, if we were to open it? And that's a possibility, only a possibility if UMBC transit somehow becomes more of a partner to what goes on in uh, in that in that lot. Let's say that we had a we had a way station there, a wait station for uh, transportation. Uh, that that may make sense to us uh, as an expense item. Of course, these times are, are really strained right now. But if we if we push push ourselves off six months or a year from now. Uh, can that lot be more of a community uh, hub rather than a metered lot, which quite frankly does not help uh, those those five or 10 minute visitations to the restaurants in the area, particularly the restaurants. Um, you know, once, once parking is stacked up on East Drive, well, It'd be nice if you could just pull into that lot and, and go pick up your to go item, quite frankly. So that's sort of the basic premise is can we reconsider the amount of income that the county experiences from that lot uh, as opposed to the convenience issue for the businesses? And Bettina. Can you unmute oh, Bettina, please? <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm unmuted. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I concur with with Joe because part of the parking problem in Arbutus is we had meters on the street and then the parking lot was free. Then they took the meters off the street and now the lot had and they took them off the street and put them in the lot. And this is the Revenue Authority lot that's right in the heart of Arbutus, right on East Drive. It's not the shopping center parking lot. <clears throat> and part of the problem in talking to the local businesses down there is that there's no place to park when they're working. There's no other than on the street. So they fill the street with employee cars and then there's no place for anybody else to park and then so either it's not convenient for them to stop or they go to the parking lot and you know my office is right across the street and for some reason people in Arbutus don't pay the meter. <laughs> they just they park there and then they you know they go and get they go and get their stuff, walk to where they have to go and then they get in the car and they leave, you know? So the majority of people that park on that lot do not pay. And then for the employees of the small businesses down there, it's tough for them to justify paying that amount with the hour limit. I think it's a two or three hour limit. 
So it kind of creates a snowball effect, you know, that in the end ends up hurting the businesses there because there's no there's there's plenty of parking, but there's no convenient parking because employees fill the streets where it's full. And that's even with, you know, quite a few quite a few vacant buildings there. If we had every we had every building filled on East Drive, then this problem would be amplified, you know, times a hundred. So that's my and and Joe and I have talked about this, but the revenue authority is pretty much like, well, we're either going to have meters on the street or we're going to have meters in the parking lot. So um, we met with Ken Mills. Joe and I met with him, what, a year ago or so? Within yeah. the past year, I'd say. And then, um, you know, he he was um, pretty set in stone that we're going to have meters somewhere. They're either going to be on the street or be in the lot. And it's not... Um, I'd almost rather see him on the street, but then if I say that, you know, I'll get plenty of plenty of pushback for that too. But it it does create a situation, especially with the lot flopping back and forth from being free to being paid. You know, and those um those electronic boxes that they have that you just pay in. You know, mm-hmm. I've seen, I've seen older clientele walking up to them and trying to figure out how to use them. So they're not very user user friendly for our older population in Arbutus. So right. don't pay, <laughs> and they're actually losing money by the time you do the the landscaping maintenance that they do. And the people that they send out once a month to check the lot, I'm sure they're they're in the red. So we'd like to come up with some type of creative plan. Um, I would not like to see the the whole lot go to UMBC. I'd like in my in my mind's eye, I'd like to see some type of partnership between the business association and UMBC to be able to manage that lot. Okay, so what I'm hearing is you're looking to have some kind of partnership with the businesses uh, to do something with the parking lot there, also with the UMBC. Yes. So do you have a paid meter right now? You said it's been going on and off. Yeah, the lot now is paid. The lot now is metered. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Josephine, we have a couple of questions from uh, Mr. McAuliffe. Um, he's wondering, um, he states that he would like to see complete sidewalks on Potomac Avenue so more people could walk safely to the Mark train. Um, he also mentions, uh, he says that HIA has requested a crosswalk or at least a stop bar at the intersection of Tom Day Boulevard and Oregon Avenue but have not been granted one. Can the county look into this again? Um, Michael, I can uh, unmute you now um, if you would like to speak about that. Sure. I'm still, excuse me, I'm still a bit congested here. So uh, please uh, forgive my voice. Uh, Yeah, I just wanted to bring that issue up again uh, about the Potomac Avenue and really the inaccessibility for pedestrians um, you know, from the Hellthorpe area down to the Mark train station. So I did bring this up before, and uh, Josephine is aware of it. So I just wanted to reiterate it. I know it'll be a bit difficult because um, the property there alongside the street is, uh, from what I understand, from the curb over to the railroad tracks is owned by Amtrak. And uh, it, I don't know how cooperative they would be with the county about putting uh, a pathway there or sidewalk along along that. So um, the other thing is um, something I've experienced a lot and it's come up at our community meetings is when you're walking down the sidewalk of um, Avenue, you come up to Tom Day Boulevard, what you encounter is, it seems like a short boulevard there, it's a short road, 
and uh, safe enough, but you have a lot of vehicles that have just come off of uh, Southwestern Boulevard going pretty fast. Uh, and really, that's only 100 yards away from Oregon Avenue, and cars tend to speed down uh, Tom Day Boulevard and forget to stop, or not forget to stop, but stop way too late, and they're out into uh, way past pedestrian area. Uh, so I've been almost hit there lots of times over the years. So I was wondering if that could be looked into. Thanks, Mike. I remember you brought this up uh, at the previous meeting, and I also remember uh, this uh, in the survey result. I made a note of that. Uh, Sam, if you have anything to add to that, please do. Something else uh, on the line of sidewalks, we have a big housing project that's needed or at least being proposed up there on the Good Shepherd property. And uh, we are worried about the lack of sidewalks in the older areas right now. And it's not a big deal right now, say, for instance, uh, Maple Avenue, because we don't have a lot of through traffic. And um, mm -hmm. uh, we're really worried about the increase of traffic once the new housing development is in. And it's really going to require sidewalks uh, to get people off of the road, because right now they're they pretty much walk in the road there and you can now because it's not heavily traveled, but this is something we have to look at in the future. It may not be related at all to what we're looking for here tonight, but I thought I'd throw it out there. Hi, this is Sam Sneed. Um, I think that the best answer to this question is one, we do have an upcoming revamp to our bike ped plan update. But also, we want to make sure that we inventory all of the areas that lack sidewalks or lack both curb and gutter and sidewalks or even have damaged sidewalks um, that require repairs. Um, these are three different categories for our department. And what we do with these is we can come up with estimates for repairs. Um, some are maintenance-based, while others are more construction projects. Um, some can be funded out of various state grant funding pools, such as Safe Routes to School or the TAP program. Others would have to be funded out of the county budget. Um, and of course, one of the reasons why we're working toward the sustainability designation is because we want to access funding for planning, design, engineering, and uh, capital projects. So, an inventory and um, these public meetings are a great opportunity to. Uh, inventory further where these gaps are to help us uh, create better connectivity. Okay, great. And uh, you can give me a call anytime. Uh, we did do a sur uh, sidewalk survey on all the roads surrounding the Hellthorpe Elementary School, and we gave it to uh, Brian Morris, who is in Councilman Quirk's office. Uh, and that, that was before this. It was. Uh, it, it was under another request, but certainly. Um, okay, well, well, thank you for your answer. Can you share that uh, with us through Josephine? Um, yeah, I certainly Mike, can. Yeah, please email me the survey which you have. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll do we have another comment from uh, Mr. Lebeck. He says. Another thought about the parking lot and the community relationship with UMBC students is the students will be less likely to drive to Arbutus if they have to pay for parking. That may be another reason to allow free parking in the lot. It seems like Arbutus has such an opportunity to be a college town, but need to make it conducive for college students by being very inexpensive. So I can let Mr. Lebeck speak on that. Yeah, thank you for allowing me to jump in. Um, just having lived in the community for a long time and actually being a graduate of UMBC, it, it just seems like such a um, a huge opportunity for Arbutus to continue to embrace UMBC. And a lot has been done already, you know, thanks to Bettina and, and so forth. And we've we've seen a lot of work done there, and we want to do more. And you know, improving you know not only the 
the expense consideration for that parking lot, but the bigger picture of making it a an attractive place and easy to get to place from for UMBC students. Um, I don't have all the answers or, or any answers on how to get all that done right now, but it um, and haven't been that involved in this committee to be honest with you very much, but would like to be more involved so you can help with this. But um, anyway, that was just my comment about the parking lot. There's lots more to talk about there, I suppose, but uh, I'll leave my comments there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Labak. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Dongara asks, uh, has there been a concerted effort to survey property owners in Arbutus's main street to garner interest in assembling properties to create a higher density mixed use development to parlay Arbutus's geographical position vis-a-vis -vis the Mark train station? Uh, Paul, if you want to speak on that, you may. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I um my name's Paul. I've been following land use stuff. It's nice to hear Mike's voice in uh this meeting. And um, you know, I, I'm just a firm believer in transit-oriented development and the power that it has. Um, and I was just curious if there's been any like concerted effort to survey all of the property owners that are down there in Arbutus to see if there's the potential for, you know, a, an assemblage project to kind of, you know, create something that would have more parking that has uh, create a little bit more residential density that supports the main street businesses down there uh, and to kind of create development where people don't even need the car because they're just walking or riding their bike down to the train station. We see many examples around uh, the country. Uh, I think locally here of, of Arlington being one of, of, you know, development like this being done and Arbutus just seems like it could be a really good uh, you know, fit for that type of development. Thank you. Um, that's one of the main reasons for collecting input for doing the sustainable community uh, designation. So uh, by having the designation to the area, it would give access to the state incentives to do the project and also to get the middle, uh, main street designation um, so that uh, you could get access to all the grants and uh, eventually get to all the projects that the community envisioned. So that's one of the main thing and the stepping stone is that to get the uh, designation. That's the first step we are here now. Okay. Okay, uh, Edka Dariani asks about uh, if there's an opportunity for UMBC to partnership with Arbutus for improvements or beautification in businesses getting business. So I, I can unmute her. Hello, um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. So I actually have a couple ideas for that. Um, so I remember in the presentation, there was a graph uh, and it was talking about some ways in which um, business, businesses were ranked as one of a weakness and um, the same thing with like transportation and beautification as well. So kind of a way to combine all three, I guess, weaknesses together to kind of make them into strengths. Um, for uh, in terms of like what you've been talking about with transportation, um, such as the parking lot and partnering with UMBC for that, or working to improve like the shuttle system or the bus system with an Arbutus, I think if there's um, conversation and if there's talk about that, that might be a very good way to kind of like funnel into a couple other ideas to improve the college town aspect of Arbutus and the businesses within Arbutus, for example. Um, 
if UMBC students have a um, an easy way to access Arbutus, if they have an easier way to, um, if they know about Arbutus in the first place and how to get there, if they um, don't have to rely on their own personal transportation to get there, like their cars and things, which again, as we said earlier, would um, clog like the transportation within the, the town, um, but et cetera, if they have an easy way to get there, they're more likely to want to go to Arbutus in the first place. And I remember, um, Somebody mentioned the uh, issues with like businesses in Arbutus getting business in the first place. So uh, a couple ways to you know combat this would be ideas, and this would be discussed with other people within Arbutus also. But um, you have some sort of like punch card for UMBC students. That's a common punch card for all of Arbutus, and there would be some sort of incentive in there for UMBC students to come to Arbutus more often, and then um, in that way Arbutus. <laughs> get that business that they need and then as well as if there's any opportunities for UMBC students to work with Arbutus in terms of beautification projects to have like murals, painting walls, um, having like town art projects as well. Uh, all of this in it, it, all of this is to say just like ways and suggestions in which UMBC students can uh, have a, a, a like have a way to get involved within all of this in Arbutus to have that incentive to help build it into that college town that stays like it helps RB to stay in the way it is. Thanks, Hector. Those are some valuable points. We made a note of it. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. You're welcome. Joseph Rager mentioned that I perhaps getting a grant to fund bicycle parking stands on East Drive. Um, Sam, do you want to take that uh, question? The parking and East Drive was something brought up in previous meetings and survey so results too. Yep. So the am I on? I'm not sure. No. I'm mute. Okay. Um, so Bettina is looking to uh, write this grant proposal for. Uh, parking stalls uh, for bicycles on East Drive. I believe that looks um, like a real promising ad adventure for us. Um, and we already do have the designated bicycle route that runs through Arbutus. And uh, I think that this is something that um, can gain some momentum. Maybe we can think about uh, the, the previous caller talking about the connection between campus and Arbutus. Um, during normal times, not COVID times, but during normal times, UMBC Transit is um, is going through Arbutus hourly from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. And so that that route is uh, was highly utilized. It isn't at this point, and it's very much pulled back in terms of frequency right now. But there will be, and in the future, there will be the Arbutus route, which is going to send anybody attending class to get to Arbutus uh, within five minutes, quite frankly, of leaving campus. So uh, while it exists, um, I believe there is a lot more work that can be done around energizing uh, the students of UMBC to look at your Arbutus as their college town. So we've got to extend beyond campus as a publication, which lists all the businesses in Arbutus and Catonsville uh, as possibilities for uh, use. I think there is there is a real there's a real incentive here um, in terms of just beyond economic development, beyond community de development, in terms of identity. Uh, Arbutus being the college town uh, of UMBC, and you know we've got 400 people living in Arbutus, both students and faculty and staff. So it already exists. It's how to capitalize on this, um, and and I think some of that has to do with attracting the next business to Arbutus that will motivate students to attend to Arbutus.
I agree. Those were some of the uh, points which is being circled on and on how to lure the UMBC students to our builders uh, to have ways to bring them in to live and shop more in our builders. So I agree with you. Point noted. Thanks, Joe. Do we have anything in the chat box? Let's see. Um, Ms. Dongar mentioned Shelburne and uh, making connectivity between UNBC and Arbutus. Hi, good evening. This is Rebecca Dongara. And yes, my comment really um, surrounds, again, the connectivity which other people have brought up and the importance of having UMBC as the anchor institution really linking to the community itself. Um, as you leave the university coming out of um, out of it onto Shelbourne, you know, there is that lack of the sidewalk there. And so without the sidewalks to support just simply walking off of campus, you know, you're sort of dead ended right there. Not only are you dead ended on the Arbutus side, but you're also dead ended on the Catonsville side as well. Um, and Catonsville is already a sustainable community. However, we lack the connectivity on that <laughs> other side as well. So, you know, I think you need to look at it holistically as an anchor institution, how we can, from a safety perspective, link it up with sidewalks and make it bikeable and walkable, um, but also not only from safety, but from a business perspective, which I'm assuming during the next focus group, we'll talk um, more in detail about. Um, I also put in the chat, uh, the signage is going to be vitally important because I hear from so many people, if you're not from Arbutus, you're confused when you go into Arbutus. It's not navigable um, to everyone. I think if you live there, um, you're used to, you know, all of the different streets that come in and out of it. Um, but if you're not from there, it's it's difficult. So I think some really great signage could improve it. Thanks, Ms. Dengarda. Um, the Shelbourne Avenue sidewalk and then connecting with the UMBC and Catonsville has been brought out, brought up many times in previous meetings, survey results, and also in A and E designation with Catonsville. This particular thing was also discussed. Um, um, and as Sam mentioned earlier, the inventory of sidewalks and the areas which should require and the connections to be made uh, is good to know so that we. Uh, Good to note for us to incorporate in the next steps. So thanks for your comment. Do we have anything else in the chat box? Actually, uh, I was gonna can you hear me? This is Michael. It looks like I'm still unmuted. Sure, go ahead, Mike. We can hear you. <laughs> I just got to thinking of something just uh, when they were talking about UMBC transportation. You see a lot of these bird and lime scooters, these uh, battery operated scooters. How about maybe some scooters for the UMBC students? Just uh, the only, only thing that would activate them would be their UMBC card. You know, instead of uh, being activated with a credit card, maybe a UMBC student card, and they could drive scooter back and forth between Catonville, UMBC, and Arbutus. Just a thought. Okay, thank you. Hi, this is Jesse Bialik. Can everyone hear me? Yes, Jesse, we can hear you. Okay, good. Um, I just wanted to let you know um, that scooters are actually banned in Baltimore County. So oh, wow. there was, yeah. So 
um, as much of a good idea as that sounds, um, there would need to be legislative change for that to occur. Just FYI. How about bikes instead of scooters? Yes, um, we're looking to do some pilot bike share programs. Um, we've been looking to hopefully get one started up by Towson University. So if UMBC was interested in doing something like that, we'd love to talk to them about that. Let me just jump in there. This is Joe Regeer again. So all the UMBC shuttle buses have uh, bike racks attached. And we've got pretty good usage going downtown, but not to our local communities. Um, so, you know, at a few $10,000 worth of expense, we've already tried to encourage, uh, you know, commuting with bicycles and so forth to our bus stops. Um, I think you can assume that UMBC would love to get uh, a bicycle maintenance program uh, that's well funded on campus. We had a small one that was funded through the Student Government Association. Um, but I really do believe that that's one area that we could negotiate uh, a better space for bicycle maintenance on campus and the shared boat bicycle program. I think that's a rich fertile field to uh, investigate. Great, thank you. We have another comment in the chat box uh, from uh, Julianne Simpson, who says that until fairly recently, the strip of Shelburne across from the church was owned by the church. UMBC purchased it within the last few years. This gives us an opportunity to plan for improvements. Hey again, Joe again. So. Uh... I got involved in trying to develop the plan to get that piece of land, that property purchased uh, with the expectation that we could improve um, the pedestrian traffic on that on that road. Uh, what we did was improve uh, parking temporarily for UMBC students. Um, and then that went away uh, based on some uh, zoning issues. So. While we now do own the property, we have not capitalized uh, on the ownership. So I'm just saying that again, what, that's another place for more discussion. Because quite frankly, uh, if there were a sidewalk uh, that ran down Shelbourne on that side of the street, which is the UMBC side of the street, uh, then we would only be dealing with the issue of transfer of pedestrians across the street at a crosswalk. Uh, to create some uh, safety. So, um, good point. I think it just needs it just needs more attention because um, the development of that area uh, is lacking right now. It's still an empty uh, a parcel of land that we have not built anything upon, uh, and I know of no plans right now. So, uh, in terms of uh, planning uh, for that area. I think that that piece of territory needs uh, some some good eyes on it. Okay, thanks, Joe. Is there any other areas that you haven't touched yet that you want to mention? I can share the boundary map. Um, if there is anything in particular, if you haven't touched. Now is the time to let us know. I hope you can see my screen. This is the boundary highlighted in red. So we heard a lot uh, uh, about the Shelburne Avenue East Drive sh along the East Drive Shopping Center. If there is anything else you would like to mention, that is another seven minutes more before I wrap up. Please let me know. Well, I hate to cap on, but it's Joe again. Hey, um, so we're, we're talking about ridership on UMBC transit and the potential to open it up to more citizens of the community beyond uh, UMBC representation. And when I heard one of the previous uh, persons mention, you know, the senior citizen center and some of that, 
sounds like there is a possibility that um, if we look at transportation more broadly uh, in terms of utilizing available funds and uh, and already existing resources, um, it, it seems likely that that would be included in a in a provision uh, that might there might be a membership card that says. Uh, that this senior, senior citizen could uh, utilize UMBC Transit to access the uh, senior center. Just saying, it totally makes sense to me in terms of being smart about resources. Okay, thank you. There were comments on uh, having more shuttle access to and through from uh, to the senior center. So it would make sense on what you're saying. Made a note of it. We have five more minutes. If there is any other areas here within the boundary, if you haven't talked about, put it in the chat box now. I think that may be it, Josephine. Okay. Um, okay, just want to uh, remind you all about the transportation survey, which I mentioned initially. It will be available in the hub uh, for a week. So please go ahead and take that survey. It's just seven questions. So thank you all for being here with us for the transportation focus group meeting. Thank you for everyone who attended and given us all your feedback. Uh, we have the next meeting for economy focus group in another half an hour at 7.30 p.m. Um, if you are interested to join in that, you're welcome to join, but you have to register before you attend the meeting. So thanks again for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.